kids sometimes do the weirdest things, but it's okay because you did all these too. From putting ring chips on your fingers and mixing all types of sodas together to drawing that S thing in school. Today we're showing you that you're not that weird after all. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos. Today we're discussing 10 weird things all kids do. Chip fingers. There are two types of people out there, those who eat ring-shaped chips normally and those who put them on all of their fingers and then eat them. Most of us have a certain way of eating certain foods like ice cream, Oreos, and ring-shaped chips. This is something even some adults can't resist doing in private. Have you ever eaten one of those ring chips by putting them on your fingers and eating them off? It's hilarious because it takes you much longer to eat the chips, but there's just something about putting them on your finger that's totally irresistible. This is one of the most popular methods of eating chips when it comes to kids. If you're still one of those people, we recommend doing this with Cheeto onion rings, but it basically works with any ring-shaped chips. There is no greater satisfaction than putting that chip on your finger and then somehow managing to eat it. There's a reason they're in a shape of a ring in the first place, right? This is something all kids do, and we bet most end up biting their fingers too, so don't worry. If you think you're the weird one on this, you're definitely not alone. Some kids don't even stop with chips. Any ring-shaped food eventually ends up on their fingers. Mixing sodas. You're definitely not alone on our next one. Have you ever noticed that soda tastes much better if you mix it with something else? Whether it's Coke, Sprite, or anything else, mixing sodas is something most adults don't ever think of doing. But for kids, creating new tastes is completely normal. Have you ever been to Subway and mixed every single soda in their soda machine in a single cup? You might be surprised because people have managed to come up with some pretty incredible flavors. A Reddit user claims this drink isn't discovered in the US USA. It's called Spezi, and it's Coke mixed with orange Fanta or Sunkist. Another user swears on lemonade and Sprite. If you like cherry, you'd love Cherry Coke Zero mixed with Cherry Sprite Zero. These combinations would have never happened if it wasn't for child's curiosity. So don't worry if you mix all your sodas, because you can actually end up with some pretty awesome flavors. Older people are raising eyebrows over the mixing sodas trend and consider it rude, especially if it's done in restaurants and other other public places, but this is a very popular thing with young people, including children. We're definitely going to try mixing Coca-Cola with Sprite next time. Making Gack and Slime You might not know what Gack is if you're a younger generation, but 90s kids can tell you that slime existed in their childhood, and it was called Gack. All kids seem to be crazily obsessed with slimy things, and we're not really sure why. There's just something about touching it that's just so exciting you can't really resist it. Did you know it takes roughly two minutes to make gack? It's made with glue, water, a mild powdered laundry soap, and just a little bit of borax. Borax is an intense ingredient, so gack was reinvented as slime, and it can be made using just a few completely harm-free ingredients. You can use washable PVA glue, liquid starch, water, and food coloring. Kids love to play with these, and they especially love making glow in the dark types. Ever wanted to know how the glow in the dark is made? Just replace regular food coloring with neon food coloring and keep other ingredients. Even though slime is super weird and it doesn't make sense to many adults, it's also very cool. And we can definitely see why kids love it. Check out this fluffy looking slime. There's just something very pleasing about these things, isn't it? Who would have thought that goo can be so entertaining? The floor is lava. If you're up to date with the 2017 social media viral trends, you know that this popular game is coming back. But it all actually started in our childhood. We're not even sure why. But all kids play the universal game of The Floor is Lava. It's a game that's familiar to absolutely everyone. The concept of the game is pretty self-explanatory. The floor is lava, and if you step on the floor, you lose. Sounds ridiculous, right? It seems like this kid's game is becoming trendy again, and friends are shouting, The floor is lava! lava in the most random places and trying to find the nearest object they can step on to avoid the floor. It's weird when kids do it, but this game is even weirder when adults do it. Did you know that variation of the game actually originated from a raw Dolls book, The Wish? A child imagined his carpet was full of snakes and hot coal. 
Then, in 2002, a webcomic uploaded a comic with a man standing on the table with a caption, The Floor is Lava. The game even showed up in The Simpsons in 2004. But if you were born before this date, you know that absolutely everyone played this game. But where did the idea of the lava come from? Drawing the S thing. Here's another throwback for you that was probably done by everyone at your school, including yourself. Do you remember that S thing everyone used to draw in their notebooks? It's one of the most addictive things to draw, using parallel lines and connecting dots. But it's a strange symbol that seemed to unify every student. It's an internationally known doodle, but not many actually know the origin behind it. There seems to be no origin behind this weird school phenomenon. A journalist called Julian Morgan wanted to come to the bottom of this S thing, but it has proven to be a much harder task than he has expected. No one knows where this thing came from, and apparently, it's not even connected to the Superman symbol as many seem to think. Some say it belongs to Stussy, a Californian streetwear brand, but the company denied it. The mystery behind the S thing is unknown, but we bet you still know how to draw this. Do you think today's kids are still making S-shaped doodles in their notebooks? If you think you know where this enchanting S-shaped came from, or if it looks familiar, leave us a comment below and let's discuss. We're definitely ready to get to the bottom of this mystery. Licking grocery carts. This next weird thing is every germaphobe's worst nightmare, but a joy to any toddler. Parents constantly complain about their children licking or putting grocery carts in their mouth, and there's nothing you can do to stop them. We're sure you've heard of reports saying just how many germs there are on a grocery cart. Tons of people touch the cart in a single day, and then your child decides to put their tongue on the handle. But don't worry, it's not just your child. This is one of those weird things all kids do, and there's no actual explanation explanation behind it. Many parents are also totally fine with it. Exposing your children to more germs could help strengthen their immune system in the long run. Although we can't help but cringe when we see a child putting their tongue on the surface of the grocery cart, there is actually an eyebrow-raising solution for that, and some people think that's taking it a bit too far. Check out these awesome-looking covers that you can put over the grocery cart and make shopping a comfortable and germ-free experience for your child. What's your opinion on this grocery cart handle? phenomenon. Are that much bacteria really harmful to children? Or is it just one of those weird things all kids do and then grow out of? Undressing your dolls. If you owned a couple of dolls as a child, there's a good chance you've probably done this. Every doll comes with clothes, but most of them end up without them at some point. Kids are curious, and playing with and undressing their dolls is something every child does. Although we're sure toys like Barbie dolls weren't made for that purpose, we bet you've undressed your Barbie and Ken to see what they have underneath their clothes. But that's not the only weird thing kids do with dolls. A very common thing kids do is chew on the leg or the hand of the Barbie doll whenever they their board, or even cut off all their hair to see what they'd look like bald. And let's not even mention putting the dolls in a very compromising position with Ken. Kids do tons of weird things to their Barbie dolls, but undressing them is one of the most common things everyone seemed to do at some point. We bet that there are a couple of Barbie dolls in your attic that are lacking clothes right now. If you thought this was a weird thing to do, you can now forgive yourself for being an odd kid. It's completely normal and done by practically all kids. Fortune telling with chatterboxes. These days, many adults would never believe in a fortune teller or someone who can predict their future just by looking at their birth date. But as kids, we actually did this all the time. Do you remember chatterboxes? No, it's not kids that talk too much. These foldable things were made out of simply just paper. What you do is write a couple of answers on the inside of the chatterbox and some words on the outside and get one of your friends to ask you questions about their future. For example, if they were asking about how many kids they will have, you'd put a bunch of different numbers in the chatterbox. But first, they have to point to a word written on the outside and let you spell it while opening and closing the chatterbox. The answer lies in the very last letter of your spelled word. It's one of the weirdest games ever, but if you're a child, you've probably believed in this fortune telling. Later on, chatterboxes turned into magic eight balls and other fortune telling toys, but this popular game was one of the first interactive fortune telling experiences you'd have as a kid. You probably don't remember anything anymore, but if you do, make sure you tell us if any of your chatterboxes Chatterbox fortunes came true. Eating the cake mix. 
Kids are true rebels, and you really can't blame them. They're the ones that get told what they can't do every single day. Don't lick the shopping cart, don't do this, don't do that, and most importantly, don't eat uncooked things. One of the most tempting things all kids do is probably eating the cake batter mix, even though they are constantly told it's terrible for their stomach. Admit it, this is something you did too, and how could you not? Cake batter is too delicious to resist. But do you know why eating cake batter is actually bad? It seems completely innocent, but eating the cake mix can actually cause salmonella. Raw flour can easily make you sick because it comes from open fields that grow tons of bacteria. This is precisely why we wash fruit and vegetables before we eat them. And since we can't do the same with flour, we have to cook it. Even FDA encourages children not to eat raw dough. But you have to admit that this is something you did at least once. How many of you have snuck into the kitchen to swipe a little bit of cake batter while your parents are baking? We're telling you, kids are the real rebels. On the other hand, who can resist a delicious looking cake batter mix? We also know some parents who refused to share the cake mix and ate it before their kids even noticed it was there in the first place. Smelling Mr. Sketch Scented Markers This is for all those children of the 90s who remember Mr. Sketch Scented Markers. Having anything scented was ridiculously exciting. But we bet there are a few children who enjoyed the smell of those markers so much they wanted to see what it tastes like. Kids do the same with basically any scented thing, including erasers. The smell is completely irresistible, and we totally understand. Did you have a favorite Mr. Sketch Marker smell? Some claim that the brown marker, which is cinnamon, scented smells the best. We're sure that all kids love the smell of the turquoise fruit punch or the red cherry marker. Recently, the markers have made its way back on the shelves, and a hilarious story behind them shows they are made using bodily flatulence of each fruit. They're just totally irresistible, and we can definitely see why kids would obsess over the smell of these markers. You can also easily make these types of scented markers at home using essential oils and old colored pens. Find out new scents, and even though it smells delicious, try to keep the pens out of your mouth. Enjoy it while it lasts, because once you get older, having scented markers in your office can raise a few eyebrows from your coworkers. We bet many of us would prefer doing weird things as a kid than normal things as adults. For more videos like this one, check out 10 Genius Ways You Can Reuse Old Toys. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. See you next time!